Stay and get drunk with a grandma, you know? Um, just stay and shoot more weird stuff on the dance floor. Set something on fire in a field. Like, just hang out. Just be, like, your audience who, who are going to go away and talk about you are right in front of you. Like, they've been curated for you. They're right, they're fans waiting to happen. Like, give them a reason to be a fan of yours. Hello everyone and welcome to Canon Conversations, the show where I sit down with some of the top creatives in the industry so that you can become a better photographer. Uh, on today's show, we're talking about uh, marketing and brand. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how people engage with your photography business and whether when they do, they use their head or their gut. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the music industry and fan culture and seeing what lessons we can learn there about building a loyal fan base for our own brand. And to guide us on our journey today, we have uh, the man, the myth, the beard, Cy Moore. So the thanks myth. for joining me, man. Hey, it's good to be good to be here, man. Anything anything featuring you, count me in. Love it, buddy. Love your work. Um, cool. So I guess uh, for anyone who is unfamiliar with yourself and Bailey and Moore and um, your whole kind of photography brand, do you want to give us a little breakdown um, yeah, of that um, and you and Soph and Soph and I, Soph, my wife, mm. she's the Bailey, I'm the Moore. Mm. Um, we've been shooting together as Bailey and Moore, shooting people in love for 11 years, mm. maybe nearly 12 years. Um, and through that time, we've kind of, we have, you know, been through multiple iterations of, of like the wedding industry, um, how that works, the photo industry and how that works. Mm. Um, we're lucky enough to have sort of built a worldwide brand, so we sort of shoot worldwide mm. um, all the time. Usually, this you know, usually we'd be kind of this time of year, which is you know, whatever we're in August, we would find ourselves in Europe and the US. But thanks to virus life, we are here <laughs> enjoying New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I, I think over that time, this sort of twelve years, we've we've taken in a huge amount of you know, re different resets of the photo industry and especially the wedding industry. Mm -hmm. um, and how you know it got really global for a while. It got really local for a while. Um, how mm -hmm. different social media flavors would show up and massively affect it. Um, and through all that sort of stuff, we've you know we've met some pretty wonderful people around the world, and we've kind of been lucky enough to build a really loyal following, which is I think what we're mm -hmm. going to talk about today. Um, yeah. But yeah, before before I. Um, was involved in photography i was in the music industry and so was in sort of in the advertising industry um doing art stuff and yeah i think both of those experiences have massively affected how we approach you know what we're doing how we approach people and all that mm. kind of thing yeah absolutely and um i kind of want to dive into your connection with the music industry for a bit now to sort of lead us into our main topic um sort of what was your connection with music and and how do you think that's um affected how you think about the world of photography um yeah like i i had a lot of years i mean i feel like if i say how many years it betrays my oldness um but but yeah a lot of years probably since i was you know i guess 18 or 19 um mm. like playing in bands making records, playing on records, touring, and getting to do that, lucky enough to get to do that, um, you know, in New Zealand and Australia and Europe and the US and um, Asia and parts of Africa and, you know, um, mm. and lots of that was, you know, making a record, doing the tour, um, being alongside, you know, being alongside an artist when they're sort of on the journey of, of figuring out how to sell their music, figuring out how to promote their music, being sort of there and seeing how labels work and how booking agents work and um you know how publicists work how how like the music media works and all these things sort of get brought together all the time and then as a photographer when we you know starting out doing photography stuff that was kind of my world so i spent a lot of time shooting album art um in the states here in australia quite a bit of stuff in the states and being a part of that machine as well that that of, of how things work um been lucky enough to to get to play some of the world's great venues, you know, um, alongside some really great bands and some really great people, and to just kind of seeing the inner workings of how that how that machine works. I started I started sort of shooting, I started photography based on being on tour 
with bands and just being bored because you know mm-hmm. you're driving across America he's you're in another venue and it's just a bit like you know what are you gonna what are you gonna do and then you then I realized oh, I had access to this quite amazing sort of behind the scenes of this quite amazing world um, so that's that's kind of what got me into um, into shooting is, is doing it that way but I think I've, I've sort of brought a lot of the ways that people think about that into what we do you know with our photography stuff and it, it just seemed natural to me I think it seemed like oh this is this is how art works um, and a lot of the people we know in the fine art world um, you know like the photography fine art world and and I guess the photography with the visual arts world that's a little more art you know not mm-hmm. quite so tradesman like and, and mm-hmm. selling a service does does the same thing just just mm-hmm. losing the you know just <laughs> losing the earbud here um, yeah it does the same thing in, in that it treats you know I, I think the approach to, to making fans and building a fan base is very artist driven mm-hmm. and when you're a photographer, like a wedding photographer or a commercial photographer or, um, you know, a family photographer or whatever it is, however it is you're getting, whoever is paying you to do what you love, um, you've kind of got a foot in both camps. You, you, It's quite a tradesman-like thing that you're doing because there's a lot of gear involved and you're setting up and you're doing the stuff and you're using this knowledge. But at the same time, there's a lot of art involved as well. Um, but the thing that you see that the music industry, that bands, not the music industry, just bands, that bands do really well, is bands have fans. Um, and they grow fans and they build fans and they build the feeling of being a fan. And one of the key things that fans, that the behavior that fans have is that they operate on heart. You know, they operate on getting an experience, getting a feeling, getting an emotion. Um, you know, like, it's such a, like music as a um, I mean David Byrne's got a great book How Music Works you know David Byrne from Talking Heads and it, it just it goes through lots of the ins and outs of just how the music industry works but a big hunk of it goes through the idea of, of also how people who consume music work you know how fans work mm. and they operate on heart they don't operate on making wise economic decisions they operate on how a thing makes them feel and they operate on um you know, you, th- you think about like, you know, a, a 20 year old who is having the greatest summer of their life and an album comes out and there's a big single and it's the soundtrack to this summer and, you know, they've done road trips to it, they've fallen in love to it, they've had their heart broken to it, um, they've, they've, they've listened to it like, you know, when, when they're cooking dinner in a flat, they've like, you know, they've listened to it on their headphones when they're going for long walks trying to figure out what they're going to do with it like it's it becomes this mm. this it's intimately linked to um to what they think about this certain time of their life and so when that band shows up and they're on tour and they're playing in a city near you you're like i have to be there i will drive through the night i will drive across america to get to la to like go to this festival that they're playing the set at and i will buy all their merch and i will like it's it's not yeah. like hmm, let me do the maths on if this works or not it's yeah. it's this whole other thing and so i it think it's irrational it's yeah it, it's it's yeah. a wonderful it's a wonderful irration, irrationality yeah. but it's still completely mm-hmm. irrational like um mm-hmm. and if you have a think about how art works you know, art operates in our society at this level that, it, um, you know, it does. it's the feeling stuff. Artists are like the feeling people. They're the people who remind everyone else whose hearts have gone a bit numb what it feels like to go, oh, that's right, that's what my heart feels like when it's light, like, holy crap. Um, and if you make art, you know, you can have fans. And I think by saying, by art, by being an artist, I'm just talking about, like, if you, if you make something out of nothing, you know, um, if you create something, you can have fans. You can have people who are obsessively, irrationally devoted to the stuff that you make, um, and will make decisions based on, on that, on how it makes them feel, um, and on, on wanting to either own your art or experience you or commission you to make something. Like you have a think about, um, like weddings. A wedding is a good example. Like two people in love doing something. You know, whether that's they're eloping on a cliff top somewhere, or they're in an ice cave in Greenland, or they're, you know, at a big event wedding on Waiheke Island. Like it, it's it's the same sort of thing that they're doing this thing for the first time in their life of commissioning someone to make some art with them, um, and it's a really exciting process. And it can either be a a process that is 
you know, very tradesman like, very, uh, we, we're exchanging money for a service and we want mm. someone who does this thing and we'll look at our options and we'll pick the person where the price and what they're offering stacks up and you're away. Or it becomes this thing where they just go, for the last five years, I've followed these people and for some reason their work has made me feel something and I've thought when I get married it, it could look like that like it, yeah. that looks like it feels mm. I, I want that and so the moment they the moment they get engaged they're just like okay mm. we now we do it like yeah. this is like mm. whatever and it's and it's not about the cost and it's not about all sorts of other things it's just about I've always dreamed or felt or wanted to have the story, the visual story of our day, um, look like you make it look, you know, um, and that's that's. I think that's often one of the things about people who are, you know, massive inverted commas destination wedding photographers, like they've managed to harness the idea that someone goes, I, like I don't care where you are in the world, and I, I don't really care what it costs. Like budget is, you know, budget's always a thing, but budget's a, it's not really a thing. It's like mm-hmm. just can you be here and can you do this thing and that's when you hear the stories of people rearranging their date to make sure that the person that they you know whose work they feel a massive affinity with that they're a fan of um that they can be there you know or fig- just figuring out the budget or figuring out how to make things work and it's it's um it's an entirely different response to someone who just is doing the maths you know and i mm-hmm. I, I always i always feel like at weddings you'll you'll see you'll hear fan stories constantly and it might not be it might not be the photographer it might not be the filmmaker it might not be you know it might be the band it might be the chef it might be like everyone's a fan of something everyone has something that they will just make irrational decisions about because they go it, it's not it, it does the money it's not the money it's not the time it's it's this is something that I feel is enormous affinity with. And when you see people having a fan response to something, um, usually it's because you've got this perfect meeting. It's like a Venn diagram of someone who makes something and someone who consumes something, and they kind of cross over in this beautiful way where it's just like, mm. oh, my goodness. And lots of fan responses, like about food or, or about design or about art and photography and visual things, um, it, the, the fan gets this feeling when they discover this person or this album or this song or this dish or whatever it is mm. that they just go oh there's someone else someone else feels the same thing mm. that I feel like someone else someone else gets me or someone else has like mm. completely um, someone else has completely designed this or built this for me and it's like that's 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 what a fan is like I I, I, um, I mean it's, it's the idea of heart it's the idea mm. of of you making decisions based on on your emotions, not on on your wallet. You know, um, yeah. it's like like brands have. I mean, yeah, I think brands have consumers. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, artists, well, I think, I think artists have like, fans. That's you know? a, it's a good dis- distinction because I think a lot of creators consider themselves artists, and there's not a lot of um, sort of thought put into the distinction between artist and craftsperson or tradesperson. And because as a photographer, you do have to straddle both. You are a person you know, providing a service, but uh, people sort of think about art being like, I make a cool thing, not the, the like you were saying, the, the, the emotional decision-making that goes into buying into a piece of art or something that's, um, you know, a piece of music or something like that. There is a different kind of, uh, decision-making process between like I need to have this thing and uh, let's weigh up our options and figure it out the most sensible yeah. way. It's I can I can totally understand if you're listening to this and you're just like got you know all this art bloody art talk mm. artist talk like and you go you know I have to I have to graft hard and I every I, every inquiry mm. there's someone who's you know asking me to sharpen my pencil and all yes yeah. and it's 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 that's that's the foot in both camps thing but. Every now and then, um, we've all had the experience of someone showing up and um, and just being like, I don't care, I love this. I, they say, you know, they email you and, and, and they start out talking about all the things, all the work you've made that they feel a strong affinity with, all the work mm-hmm. that you've made that you go, and, and you know, and they can list your greatest hits. And you're like, this is a person who, you know, who's making decisions based on their heart. 
Mm. And and they just want to figure out how to make it happen. And it's not it's not a license to charge whatever you want. No. It's not a, and it's not a license to be a dick. Um, but what it is is it's is it's a very different economy. The fan economy is a very different um, place to be because in a fan economy, you're not you're not competing with anyone. Mm-hmm. Like there's no you know <laughs> you own this this particular little slice of someone's heart, or your work owns this particular little slice of someone's heart. Um, that no one else, you know, that no one else owns. Like, so it's it's that's I think that's one of the big keys where you think about oh, how do you grow your business or how do you have longevity? I think the biggest thing that fans give you is longevity. Um, you know, the biggest thing that fans give you is you have this this workforce of of evangelists, you know, for for what you do out there mm-hmm. who will to, who talk about your who un, who get your work. First of all, you know, um, and who talk about it to everyone who who'll stop and listen, um, and it's not it's not built on, um, you know, it's not built on everyone getting the same message. It's not built on everyone being like, hey, you know, it's just built on people going, oh, this stuff makes me feel something like I love it, like yes. Um, and one of the, it's got a beard here in my mouth here. <laughs> Hopeless. That's a problem. The problem with the beard. I'm, I'm, um, say, I'm, I'm sure it's a daily occurrence. Oh, it's like a, it's like a every. Te- it'll happen ten times. It's here every ten minutes occurrence. Um, yeah, it's it, I th- it's a really interesting interesting idea to consider that the people who hire you to do what you do, how many of them are hiring you from the heart, and how many of, you, of them are hiring you from the wallet, um, mm-hmm. and it's. You know, it doesn't feel nice to, to 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 feel like you're being hired across a landscape of twenty other options or whatever, mm. or fifty other options, or five other options, and people are making decisions based on, um, you know, based on the economics of it. But it mm. feels incredible to know that someone says, "Just do what you do, just be you, just just make the work that you make, and just make it for us." That'd be amazing. Um, and a certain part of that is is their interest in how how you work and how you make the work and how you operate. But one of the things that you notice of, is that when you're um, when you're operating and you're making work for a fan, like there's no second guessing, there's no thinking about, there's no facade, there's no thinking about, you know, do I need to see this through different eyes? It's entirely just you. You can operate as yourself. You can be yourself. Um, and you can play a natural game. And you can do the stuff that you love. And I think that that's the key. As as you, and when we were starting out, um, you know, like ninety percent of our work was was people were making decisions based on budget, and ten percent of our work people were making decisions based on just liking our work. Mm. And over the years, we've pushed that back to almost be the other way. You know, ninety percent and and ten percent. And every now and then, when you are making work that was that's clearly a budget decision you are really it's very obvious like it's so it's starkly obvious Mm -hmm. and it's it just reminds it just reminds me all the time uh you know make fans always you know grow grow fans like do everything you can to get fans and it works and it works incredibly efficiently in so many in so many ways especially in figuring out how you can promote yourself figuring out how you can get your work to the audience of people who are going to have an affinity with it um I mean, you think about the amount of time that you put into uh, into social media, for example, into promotional stuff, into keeping things updated, into all the sort of stuff, you know, and you're just eternally second guessing your audience and what's gonna what's gonna compete with all the other stuff they're seeing, you know. Like if you've got fans, fans will seek your work out. Hmm. Um, they'll they'll hunt it down. They'll go through your website constantly to see if there's anything fresh or new, or to just look at the stuff that they love. You know, they're they're, they're constantly on about it. You, you're not really you're not competing in that way. You're basically you're supplying hungry people with the stuff they love. It's like having a crowd of people who love hot chips, and suddenly and you've got a deep fryer and you just you're just banging out hot chips. That's a ridiculous. That's a ridiculous <laughs> analogy. But know. everyone loves hot chips. Everyone's a fan of of hot chips. Yeah, we we started um, we started deep frying like deep frying chicken during the lockdown um and <laughs> i know the way to just pack on the oh, lockdown and and as soon as we hit level three we had like a, a few friends in our extended bubble over and so we, i had the pot of hot oil we don't have a deep fry just a pot of hot oil had the pot of hot oil going and you just suddenly know that there's a there's a whole queue of people waiting just outside the kitchen because you can only <laughs> deep fry so much chicken at a time and i was like 
level of fan the fan base here is quite high <laughs> in this moment only in this yeah. moment because no one's there's making no, decisions with, with no their heads there's there. the, it's also there's i'm like i'm dominating the fried chicken game in this house right now there's no other fried chicken available in this house no, so there's no of, competition it's, it's only me um, yeah no i think look, I, I think we've done a really great um sort of initial breakdown of what fan culture is and the fact that it's 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 a good thing you you want you want your potential um you know clients customers to be uh you know making their decisions with their heart um i think it's really interesting that, that you you're talking about all of this in relation to the music industry um because it's it's this funny little industry where the word customer isn't used it's it's all it's all fans people are described as fans not as yeah. clients or customers um and i think that's um you know it speaks to the people's decision makings around music and if we can harness that kind of decision making um obviously it's it's incredibly powerful so i kind of want to delve into now uh, we've kind of covered the what and the why. I kind of want to delve into the how now. Um, how do you guys utilize, uh, you know, your understanding of, of the fan economy and relate it to Bailey and Moore? You know, how are you guys building a loyal f- fan base? I, th- this is this is probably the biggest the biggest statement, or out of a couple, but like if you want, um, you know, if you want to make work that. Um, if you want people to be fans of your work, you have to make work that they can be fans of, mm. and that is that. There is 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 everything. I mean, you you want if you look at look at someone that you're a fan of, like of their visual work or of their films mm. or like you know of music or whatever. Um, like people aren't fans of like of elevator music. Like they're not just like holy, holy shit! I've got to get my hands on that record. Like that's amazing, you know. While well, they've got like yeah. two minutes in the elevator going up, you know, being like, yeah, this, this is this is like some remixes of like you know, simply red, but played in a xylophone from like nineteen ninety two. Like you can't ridiculous example, but you, you can't be a fan. You can't be a fan of that. Um, but someone who writes like a broken hearted love song that sums up exactly what it felt feels like in the moment for you to have your heart broken when you were twenty three years old and don't know what you're doing with your life. And they, they somehow put into words what you can't put into words. And then that song shows up. When you have a broken heart, mm. you're just like, I can be a fan of this. This has got some legs. And that's the, those, those are the two differences. Mm. And it's, it's easy to talk about a fan economy. Um, but a lot of people, you know, are making, because they think it's what the audience wants, is, are making, have, the budget decision has, has reduced them to making music when in fact they should be writing broken hearted love songs. And it's it's easy that like music is, for example, in, a, in an elevator is built, it's built to, a, to, to not offend the most people possible um, out of the thousands of people who are in that little steel box every day. Um, and a broken hearted love song will obviously polarize a hell of a lot of people. Uh, but that's the difference. Like making work that people can be fans of means that you're also making work that people cannot be fans of. And for a lot of people, that is that that is a significant risk. But it's the thing about looking. Look at the work that you love. Look at the people who are your heroes. Look at the work that they make. The work that you are absolutely ridiculous, a ridiculous fan of. You know, look at anyone who, if you're a photographer, look at look at like other photographers' work. You know, the heroes and legends in your industry and the the work. Anyone who you think I would love to meet them, then you're a fan. Um, and look at those people and ask yourself about their work. What is it? Like, what is it that turns me on? What is it that makes me just go, oh, yeah, like, I get this. Like, they get me. For a photographer, often it is you look at it and just go, oh, yeah, I wish I could make work like that. Mm. Um, but that's usually just downstream of your heart just going like this. For some reason, this absolutely turns me on. That is like like in, in, in everything. If you can be ruthlessly honest with yourself, you can be like, is my work fan worthy? Like, it, am I making work? And not just are you making work, but are you showing work to your audience um, that they can be fans of? And it's difficult because often that work can be polarizing. Um, we we make work that's quite dark. Like, and by dark I mean just literally dark. Mm. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of shadow in it, you know. Um, 
And I think it, it, we started making work like that because it was, our, it was our way of dealing with the ruthless New Zealand sun. Mm-hmm. And then we, we'd go, and, you know, you're shooting on location, you're shooting available light. And then we would go to the States or to Europe or whatever where the light was beautiful and soft. And, and like, the people we were shooting with there would be like, oh, yeah, you know, can, we're doing the dark thing, right? And we'd be like, ah, the light's good too. It's too it's too good here like it's too perfect like how the, how do we figure out you know flee inside and pull the curtains and we'll try and make something yeah. um, and every time I hear someone who's polarised by our work so mm-hmm. for example wedding planners or you hear other photographers being like oh no, you don't want them their work's too dark I'm like when that's like you know yeah. it's, 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 it, it almost inspires the opposite in me than being bummed when someone says oh you know that's not the right work for you because it's too dark I'm just like at least they know our work at least they have a look at least they can at least they can identify what they hate about it like all of those they things, know what Bailey and Moore photography is yeah they may they may just hate it they may like it may be polarizing but it hmm. it's at least um you know it's at least a it's on on the on the route on the track to, to someone understanding what you're trying to do even yeah. if they don't like it you know hmm. I mean I, I I really really hate to make this comparison but it's it's like a Big Mac some people will love a Big Mac. Some people will hate, hate a Big Mac. But everyone knows what a Big Mac is, and it, it is polarizing in that way. I mean, it's it's a bit of a stupid, uh, you know, comparison because everyone loves Big Macs. But um, it, t- totally, it's uh, you, not trying to please people. Not, well, not trying to please everyone. Well, it's yeah, more about no. trying to please yourself. Really, it's about about trying to lead the- into what stokes you. And there's, there's, yeah. and w- that comes with that comes with it. So, mm. I mean, if you're asking, am I making work that people can be fans of? Then you've mm. got to, the next step. You've got to ask yourself is, what kind of work am I making? Is yeah. is it consistent? Um, do I? I mean, I hate to, I hate the phrase like your voice. Like, do you have a yeah, creative yeah, voice? Yeah. But you know, for want of a better trite term to use, like, do you have mm. a do you have a, an artistic voice? Do you have a thing that you are that you're working towards? Have you been in the game long enough to have have failed enough to figure out what success looks like with with the work you're making? Anyway, you know, um, th- there's there's so many questions, but lots of the questions that come from that fan are you making work that people can be fans of? Question mm-hmm. is is stuff about you being self aware about what you're trying to do? You know, um, it, it it means that you have to sort of put your put your head above. I mean, you know, it's it's. Doing this game is sometimes like feels like swimming in, um, you know, in a, in a in the sea with the swell a little bit too high, and you're just trying to keep your head above the water half the time. But yeah. if you want to be making, figuring out what kind of work you should be making so that you can build fans, you sort of have to tread water enough to to pause for a second and, and look at your own work and go, okay, what am I doing here? Like, which direction mm-hmm. am I swimming? How am I doing this? So, so many of those little questions that go together about how you craft your trajectory how you how you steer the ship of of what you're doing with your as an artist and with your work and with your business reset camera time reset reset the camera time hold call and we're back Mm. um yes so so many of um so many of those things about you know being self-aware about the kind of work that you're trying to make it's 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 they're much they're much bigger questions and i think often asking the question about do you have fans leads you on to to all of these other questions about you know what kind of work am i trying to make long term and what's my what's the path that i'm on and and how am i is, is it satisfying you know am i making work that's significant you know is it sustainable all these all these things are um they come out of that question about fans so it's kind of it's part of the bigger it's part of the bigger question that an established artist sort of would ask you know and it's when you i think lots of people have the first time they have that experience of thinking god actually what kind of work am i trying to make is when they get a reaction a fan reaction from someone where someone has this huge affinity to their work and they and it, they get the heart feels from what someone's making and lots of lots of visual artists will will encounter that and just be like whoa ah that was pretty intense like someone who kind of knew everything about all the cool stuff i've shot and gets it in the same way that i get it and then you start going wait a sec why how how is that the first time like how 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 is that that not the reaction how do i get everyone else to have that reaction to this stuff um yeah I i like that because it's that's something that i've noticed just in the last 
year, two years in terms of the in relation to my wedding film work. Because like in the last like two years, I've like really sort of like narrowed down into going, okay, I'm going to make like really like energetic, exciting kind of party films. That's like my kind of style. That's the films I want to make. And I, I do. I, I, I jump on calls with couples now that I've never met who are looking to book me. And they'll just straight away say, you know, I, we're really after an energetic, exciting film. Huh? And, and you know, I've never met these people and it's not like I'm trying to do anything like super consciously to like put that out into the universe. But there's obviously something about making work that is uh, sort of unabashedly about one thing that people will then lock into it and realize that's that's what they're offering. That's what they're all about. And that's what I know I can get from it's- that person. It's easy to be a fan of something that's really focused, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like with all of this stuff, this talk about fan culture, fan economy, the way fans make decisions, like always, like always keep referring to like whenever I try to understand it, I always just come back to things that I'm a fan of. Like I'm a fan of so many mm-hmm. things. Like I'm an obsessive mm-hmm. fan of of so many different bands. I'm an obsessive fan of so many different foods um, of architecture of these things. And like I see the the, the ridiculous you know, obsessive decisions I make about those things. And I'm always just, whenever I'm doing that, you know, making a ridiculous economic decision or traveling across the world to go and visit a building or, you know, whatever it is, I'm always like, whoa, pay attention. Like, why Mm. look at you? You know, why are you doing this? Like, what's the stuff that you love? And to the point where when you're a fan of something and everyone knows that you're a fan of that thing and they buy you those things or things that relate to those things for gifts, you know, um, Mm. that they get it, that you're just like, now you're broadcast, now you're in a... That's going from being a fan to being to being an evangelist for, for something. Um, yeah, like D- David Byrne talks about that idea that if you're a, if you're a full time artist, if you're a professional artist, like you need a thousand fans and you can have a career. And the key to that is you might need. Yeah, I mean, you might need to sell twenty thousand things at, at some stage to twenty thousand people, but each one of those fans will bring twenty people with them. Um, you know, I think about like. Um, like the bands that I'm a fan of, you know, and I'm always consuming new music, you know, and and always buying new music. And when I find a record I like, it's just I won't shut up about it. Like I will, I will email people entirely unsolicited. I will email people and say, "Here's three albums that you should be listening to." And they're just like, like you know, they're basically getting like, they're getting like, you know, my top tips, my listening list, and they didn't even ask for it. I'm forcing it on people. So it's you know, when when you encounter stuff that you really love like you'll be like that and you'll talk about it um you'll be like you need to try this or you need to do this or you need to experience this thing um and that i mean that's we all know people like that and we're all like that like we all have a fan experience and it's amazing how fragile that experience can be you know because it can fall over really quickly too but it doesn't take much to build it like we we have a saying about building a business which is like make fans always so every single opportunity that you've got to be around someone um, and be nice and talk about the stuff that you love and give them an experience of of what it feels like to be in your live in your little art world um, you, you absolutely should just throw yourself at it you absolutely should take it like we're always saying to, to other like wedding photographers at workshops like you know when they talk about oh how do I you know how do I get find my people you know how do I find the audience who gets my stuff? Um, do I you know how do I find them on Instagram how do I like find them you know like with with targeted banner ads on a thing you know and we're like banner if ads you, if you, <laughs> is that even still a, still a thing I don't even I, um, yeah but it's it's like you we're always like no nah, just don't do that like you you know rather than leave a wedding if you finish a wedding at 11 if you're supposed to finish at 11pm hmm. um, stick around till midnight like what are you going to do with that hour anyway you're just going to go to mcdonald's or you're going to you know drive home and whatever or or drive home lay in bed and scroll through instagram explorer um but you you know for all the time that you would put in on social media on instagram for example trying to come up with captions and plug your brand you're in front of a bunch of people right now who have experienced you all day long and they've seen you do your thing and hopefully you haven't been a dick you've been nice and you've hung out with stay and get drunk with a grandma you know um just stay and shoot more weird stuff on the dance floor set something on fire in a field like just hang out just be like your audience 
who are going to go away and talk about you are right in front of you. Like they've been curated for you. They're right. They're fans waiting to happen. Like give them a reason to be a fan of yours. You know, show up the next day. Like you know, go go jump in a pool at two a.m. But like th- this is the sort of stuff that um, you know. Don't be don't be like clocking out. Like like if if you want to be treated like a you know like a plumber who gets paid you know in six minute lots or whatever, um, then clock out like a plumber does and be like all right i'm out i'm loading the van and we're gone but if you if you're an artist and you, and you want people to fall in love with what you do then be memorable like hang out with them talk about it like we um we carry around we we make these little books every year that are like a little a6 size i should have one here because they're usually not far away um yeah they're usually not far away which is key um they're little little a6 size you know it's probably 32 pages in them of and they're offset printed of our of our work all sorts of different work like weird analog triple exposures and you know landscapes and couples and doing beautiful and it's just it's there's nothing there's nothing else in it but imagery but beautifully printed we have them stuffed in our camera bags like in the back of the car like down at every jacket i've got it's got three crumpled ones in the pocket and the moment you're anywhere on a plane in a lift um you know like trying to hitch a ride on the back of a weird four-wheel drive in central otago from a farmer and someone is like what do you do like that what do you do you hand them the thing you know like it's you just go like i'm a photographer like it looks like this um you know that's that's the that's the phrase like i'm a photographer it looks like this here's the thing and you give people this thing and suddenly they're flicking through and that's it's not they're not scrolling away it's not like oh here's my website you're not giving them a business card it's no. this, this is object and yeah and which it's, is the it's, start of the journey you know you're starting the journey by gifting them something and 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 they and they look at this beautiful this beautiful work and they're just like oh you yeah. know this and you're just like yeah, yeah that's what we do and then suddenly yeah. they're just like where do you want to go We'll take you. We, this we do so, like even just so many simple things like location scouting and knocking on, driving up long gravel roads of a station to like have someone open the door to Shearer's quarters who just really is not interested in seeing a bloody townie show up, um, and you're just like, hey, I'm a photographer, I make this, and while they're looking at you, just like any chance that like we could make some of that over there, because like this place is off the chart, you know, and they're just like. I'll take you know yeah. moments before they were like I'll stab you and then <laughs> moments later they're just like let me take you there I love it as much as like I love it as much yeah. as you do like obviously let's, let's think. so there's lots of that stuff though where it's it's like all the, the the ways that like people make fans are like the people right in front of you right now are your first opportunity to make fans and you've only got to like go to a show you know, go see a band at a festival or something and then have an encounter with one of the bands you loved that's bad. You know, mm-hmm. some angry drunk person in a lift or a car park or whatever to just make you go, ooh, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan anymore. This is all over. Yeah. Like, I can't stand them. Um, I always think about those experiences that I've had. Like, I bear a grudge against like mm-hmm. people who, I'd ha- who were heroes and who just disappointed me from a distance. Yeah. And I just bear a grudge years later. I'm just like, no, they're horrible. Like, even if you haven't been within 100 meters. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, you can pop the bubble like, really easily. But, but the opportunity to make fans, make fans always, that's a phrase, um, is, is right in front of you constantly and it starts with being nice and it starts with introducing people to what you do and it starts with you know it starts with figuring out how people have an emotional connection to some work and it's usually through a person you know um it starts with just not being a dick that is key yeah right on um fantastic i mean i think we we probably about at time to leave it there (laughs) we've covered heaps and you've certainly made it's probably the, the easiest podcast for recording that I've ever done. <laughs> I mean, I knew what I was getting into because I've recorded a podcast episode with you before and, and, and we've hung out and you have uh, what people describe as the gift of the gab, which which I love. And you're someone who, who you're probably the person I, I know who thinks most intellectually about what they do. You know, you, you, you delve into every kind of nook and cranny of what it is you do why you do it how to do it better what like you know you're constantly searching and trying to figure out 
what it is that you do what you do and that is really inspiring and really fascinating to listen to so yeah, i just wanted to say thank you for uh giving us this hour of your time cheers it's 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 a good time we're super thankful to you for doing a good podcast um it's like it's a it's a rare it's a rare thing to have someone who just lets you riff on a few ideas and and keeps the keeps the ball rolling you know in a great That's way right. and also to canon for you know for making great gear that we can make stuff with holy crap never never um take for granted the tools that like the tools that a, a brilliant machine like canon can put in your hand so that you can get on and do and do good things god it's like it's the key to the game what will we be doing what would i be doing if like canon didn't make some of the gear they made i'd probably actually be a plumber and being a plumber is fine but it's probably not for me i mean let's be honest you'd you'd just shoot everything on film yeah to- yeah totally <laughs> I, 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 like one of my favorite film cameras is like is, is like the 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 one v like the canon one yeah, v, yeah. like just the this greatest so still still linked to canon now i'll be stuck with yeah. just old old german cameras from the 50s that are slightly frustrating yeah. Right on. Cool. All right, man. Well, um, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Beautiful. Um, we'll obviously have links to all of your work and everything below. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. See you next time. Game off. Bloody stutter. Bloody stutter. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. It's your, it's, your so. signature, it's your signature move, though. It's my signature podcast yeah. move. The, it's like... the podcaster with the speech impediment. 